This experience took place between the eighth grade and freshman year of high school. During my eighth grade and high school years, I was an extremely depressed kid. My mom was an abusive alcoholic and because of that, there was a lot of negative energy that not only filled the house we were renting, but seemed to hover around me. I was stupid at the time, even more so than I am now, and liked to give this negative energy a lot of attention. While I had a lot of minor experiences like hearing voices, lucid nightmares, scratches on my body, etc. One experience really sticks out to me in my memory. I was spending the nights at my grandparents' house. I wish I could remember the reason, but it's hard for me to recall a lot of memories in that time period due to my trauma. I was raised for a good portion of my life in my grandparents' house, and so I was spending the night in my old room when I was very suddenly and very aggressively shaken awake. I quickly brushed it off as me having one of those nightmares where you feel like you're falling. But as I got comfortable and tried to go back to sleep, I heard snapping. No rhythm, just very aggressive snapping all around the bed I was lying in. At this point in my life, I was so desensitized to having weird things happen to me, I just sighed angrily and went back to sleep. I don't know how much time had passed, but for a second time, I was shaken awake. This time the bed was shaking a little too much, however, so I knew it wasn't one of those falling nightmares. I remember sitting up this time out of annoyance and just looked around. I had a nightlight in the room because I'm kind of scared of the dark after certain experiences that I might share here later. So I could see everything fairly well. The snapping started again and it came from all around my bed once more. Once again, I grumbled some obscenities and angrily went back to sleep. Finally, for a third time, I was shaken awake. This time I was still being shaken after I'd woken up for a few extra seconds. I sat up again, and this time the snapping noises were louder and somehow felt even closer to me, much more all over the place. I was really pretty pissed now, and as I glared around my room, I suddenly saw something whiz past the front of my bed and smack the tall metal lamp on the left side of my room. For whatever reason, this sent me over the edge and I remember paying some pretty choice words to whatever was waking me up and threatening them before throwing myself back onto my pillow, turning to my side and yanking the blanket over my head to sleep. I didn't wake up again after that. The following morning, I looked around the lamp to see what could have been thrown, but found nothing. It sounded like metal hitting metal, so I assumed it was a coin, but I couldn't find anything. I've also had some other experiences in my grandparents' house and my own, so let me know if you want to hear about those. Steve is a weird thing that I cannot explain. I thought he was a shadow person, but he isn't always like a shadow. He can interact with physical objects, can touch me, touch others. His touch is cold. I call them he because the few times I've heard him speak, it sounded more like a distorted masculine voice. He's tall. I tend to feel a cold near me whenever he's present. He sometimes closes and opens doors, taps on the walls, flicks lights on and off. He's able to imitate mine and my parents' voices and can look exactly like me but his eyes are wide open, so you can see the white, which is something I cannot do. He's also saved my life on multiple occasions, which has always confused me on why. Also, Steve's eyes are green. They look as if they're bleeding green. That's basically all you need to know about him. So now I'll go through and tell you all the weird shit I've dealt with. Things that I have a hard time believing, even though I'm well aware they happened. Take note that I also wear glasses, so I don't have the best distance eyesight. So, where to start? When I was little, I had an imaginary friend and Steve, this tall, large, black, shadowy figure that would watch me from the hallway. He would often just sit there and stare at me as I played. I invited him inside multiple times, which now I realize was a really stupid thing to do. My cousins were not the nicest people to me. They often locked me outside, inside rooms, and left me alone for hours locked up. One night, 
They threw me outside and locked the door. It was pitch dark and I was scared. I sat down and sobbed my eyes out until I felt something was there. I told it to just eat me, but I'd taste bad. Nothing happened. Eventually, someone opened the door and let me in. I walked up the stairs to go to my grandfather's room, but I turned around and to my surprise and fear, something was staring at me through the glass on the door, watching. A while later, I was five and we moved from Chile to Australia. Rented, my parents bought a house. Waited a few years for it to be constructed, and then we find a home. I've forgotten the exact dates and shit. I'd spoken about this on Amino, but I'd lost my account. But what happened was, one day, I walked into my bathroom to wash my face. I was frowning and looked up into the mirror. My reflection was grinning. I frowned further. It grinned more, as if pleased that I saw it. I screamed and ran out of the bathroom, slamming the door shut behind me, and scrambled into my room. Fear set in again, as I realised my room had a mirror, and I could still see my reflection. So I was caught staring between the bathroom door, afraid my reflection would try to kill me, and my room's mirror. My parents came in and asked if I was okay, and I said that I'd seen a spider. It was nothing. Things went silent for a while until one night... I was laying in bed and staring at the entrance to my room. Out of nowhere, something large and black came and stood in the doorway, hand on the wall, head lowers, eyes, and just stood there, staring at me. At first I thought it was my mum who came up to check on me, so I moved to put my weight on my arm. Steve moved back. Since I haven't been wearing my glasses, I just thought it was still my mum standing there. The lights from the living room shone to the hallway so I could see it was a solid black mass. I called out, Mom? Dad? No response. I tried again. Mom? Dad? No response again, and I was fucking terrified. No, I didn't think it was a ghost. First thing on my mind was a home intruder. I feared the worst, that my parents could be out cold. But what if this person had a gun? They could shoot me. I started trembling and crying, but didn't make a sound. I remember reaching for my glasses and putting them on, and it quickly moved away, going into the bathroom. I got out of bed and rushed, flinging the bathroom door open. There was nothing there, yet the mirror? Oh, fuck. I felt as if something was there. My parents called out asking if I was okay, and I just said yes. I will never forget this. I was little, with two friends. We were at a park playing by a lagoon. They had walked off to show their parents something while I stayed behind. For some reason, I just walked into the water mindlessly. I felt so empty, so lost. I exhaled all the air out of my lungs and inhaled as much water as I possibly could when I fell in. Five or so minutes passed, or more, I cannot remember. I did count to five minutes though. I felt sleepy and I heard a voice with no voice. Like words spoken, yet no voice behind them telling me, get out of the water. Cold hands grabbed my armpits, trying to pull me up. I could hear the desperate voice, get out. Eventually, I listened and I tried to swim up, but my foot was stuck. I tried to reach down, but the voice told me not to. So I listened. I wiggled my foot and got it out, leaving my shoe behind. I felt the hands pulling me up and out of the lagoon. I coughed up a shitload of water, yet I felt no pain. My lungs were not burning in agony. I pulled out a piece of long green shit out of my mouth and felt it up my throat. My body felt cold. I felt as if I were being supported by something. As time passed, I started to forget about this whole Steve thing. I was walking out of my room and had my bathroom door open. I look inside, only to see a black, solid mass, human-shaped, the exact same height as me standing staring into the mirror. I went fucking pale and looked forward again and walked to the living room, sat at the table and burst into tears. I tried not to sob so my parents wouldn't know. I just stared at the bathroom that was down the hallway, utterly horrified. Some time later I got up and went to check. There was nothing. 
I told myself it could be the lightning, but fuck. I know it wasn't the light. There wasn't any clothes hanging off the shower to cast a shadow, yet I knew it wasn't a shadow. It had been a solid fucking black mass standing there. This is when things started to get out of hand. Knocking on walls, opening and closing of doors, it was rather scary at first. The first time I heard him tapping was when I was in bed. Behind me, he tapped on the wall, so I tapped back. A few days later, there was a tapping on the wall in front of me, so I called out his name. Then he tapped in my dad's workroom and freaked my parents the fuck out. My dad ran to the studio and asked if I was tapping on walls. I said no. I was honestly trying not to laugh at how scared my parents were. Footsteps were something I heard a couple of times. It wasn't much, just a few of them silent again. Though one day, while I was with my mum watching TV in her room, we heard it. Loud, thumping footsteps from the hallway coming to her room. Mum grabbed me and hugged me tightly. She started trembling and was scared. She began praying and told me to pray as well. I watched where the footsteps were as they entered the room and stopped at the front of the bed. Mum hugged me for quite a while until she thought it was gone. More shit started happening. Footsteps became more frequent. Knocking, doors, all that stuff became more normalised. He would sometimes make loud growling noises, scratching. I had spotted him watching me down the hallway multiple times, yet never managed to get a decent look at him. He spoke to me when I was annoyed, mumbling. His voice had been a distorted male voice. Quite scary, actually. I'd been in my room minding my own business when I heard my mum yell for me to open the door. I got off my bed and she came inside because the door somehow unlocked on its own. She smiled at me and asked why I'd come to stare at her and lock the door. I went pale and told her I hadn't left my room. She laughed and said she saw an exact copy of me standing there, staring at her and locked the door then walked down the hallway to her room, but never towards mine. So she'd be confused by the fact that I came from my room, not hers. Time passed and I was in an awful state of mind. I was more suicidal than ever. Felt more depressed than usual and just wanted death to claim my name. I was walking to my studies down a walkway when I fell towards the road. I saw a car ring coming and it beeped its horn at me, but I couldn't bring myself to care. I was falling. That's when a cold hand grabbed my wrist and yanked me off the road, saving my life. I stood there shocked and shouted at the dude for beeping their horn at me. I turned to thank my saviour, but there was nobody there. I touched my wrist. It was cold, as if a hand had grabbed it. That happened twice. The third time he saved me was when I'd been walking to the bus stop after studies. I was feeling like shit and stopped out of nowhere in the middle of the road, and then walked extremely slowly. I felt two cold hands shove me out of the way, and I nearly fell flat on my face at the end of the walkway. I got up to shout at the person, but a car swooshed right in front of my face. I could have died, and nobody was there again. Two things happened after some time, though. Maybe a few weeks or a month later. I wasn't myself. I was angry, aggressive, acting like the old me that I despised so much. I'd been sitting in the living room doing a craft project to try to get the nerves out. It was 12 o'clock to midnight. I got up, realising it was so late, and went to close the window. A voice in my head said not to close it. I could feel a presence there, yet I was so angry I did. I slammed it shut and walked to get a glass of water. That's when I heard it. The fucking door. It clicked, slid open, slammed shut, and quickly clicked back to shut. The door was broken, so you had to quickly slam it shut and click the lock to close it. I turned. Nobody there as usual, yet I could feel something staring. Angry. Really angry. Hateful. Wanting to tear me apart. I got the water and walked to my room and tried to pretend there was nothing there. He followed me. Stood at my doorway glaring. I tried to go to sleep, but fucking hell. I'd never had such terrifying, gory nightmares as I did that night. I woke up so many times, 
every five to ten minutes, trying to scream. Tears running down my eyes, desperately trying to stay awake, but my body felt too heavy. Eventually, I woke crying and stopped. I felt a cold hand rest on my shoulder, and I finally got an hour of sleep. Peaceful sleep. His weirdly aggressive manner didn't change for a few months. He continued to slam doors angrily. The presence felt unpleasant. Displeased in a way, maybe. I sat on my bed watching a Marco Pilio video of him playing a horror game. There were footsteps on the video, but there were some that sounded off, so I paused it. Mind you, I was wearing noise-cancelling headphones. The footsteps continued. I was confused and unpaused the video, thinking I hadn't paused it. Paused it again, and I could still hear the footsteps. I slowly took the headphones off, loud and clear footsteps, coming towards my room, stopped at the doorway, and back down the hallway, then back towards my room. At first I thought a home intruder, so I looked for an item to defend myself, a pencil at the very least, to stab them if they tried to grab me. There was nothing, so I started crying, utterly horrified. I've never understood how people who hunt paranormal can just grab and record because I couldn't bring myself to grab my fucking stupid phone. I was so fucking scared I couldn't move, just covered my mouth to stop myself from screaming. Eventually, I grew the courage to get off the bed, and when I looked down the hallway, there was nothing there. Yet I heard the footsteps coming back and forth until my parents arrived home. Steve headed to the living room and left. I got better. Steve went back to normal stuff. He no longer was scaring me or trying to hurt me. He was just his old self, you could say. Knocking, doors, random pokes and just the usual. Though he still managed to give me more than a good enough of a fright. While cleaning the kitchen floor, I heard my own voice call out to me. Come over here. Come, come. Laugh and call me over again. I was home alone and immediately grabbed a knife, scared for my life. Then he started laughing like crazy and in silence. Eventually I looked down the hallway to my parents' room, but nothing. This was the fourth time Steve saved my life and the one time my mum saw it with her own two eyes. We were at the train station, and I felt weird. I started to walk the edge of the station, the yellow line that leads over the edge to the rails. The train was coming. A few seconds from arrival, I put my foot over and felt my body starting to fall forward. I locked eyes with my mum, and she looked scared, unable to do anything. Then... Two cold arms wrapped around my waist and pulled me back, right as the train passed by, pulling me out of danger. Mum was furious with me, but once we got off the train and reached the car, she started crying and saying I should be dead. I should have been gutted on the rails. She looked at me and said she saw something pull me out of the way. Saw me as I pulled back. She couldn't believe it. She said she didn't know whether it was a guardian angel, a ghost, God, some sort of entity wanting to protect me, but whatever it was, had saved my life. As we drove home, I asked her if she had ever seen a tall black figure. Long fingers. She had turned to face me, looking dead serious, and asked me how on earth I knew about him. I told her that I'd seen him since I was a child. He's been with me forever. That's when I found out that Steve here, he'd been with us for years. When mum and dad had gotten together and bought a house in Chile, the house was built from zero and all. For some reason, they both saw Steve, the tall, black, shadowy figure. They'd seen him standing in their doorway when they'd go to sleep. Mum told me Steve loved my room. It was almost as if he knew mum was going to have a baby and was waiting. My parents weren't the only ones who saw him. Our maid, who was my mum's friend, had seen him and screamed. She'd been so scared she never came back to clean the house again. My mum's mother saw it too. She got scared and called a priest to cleanse the house of the spirit, but it didn't work. When I was born, Steve stopped bothering my parents and stuck with me for some odd reason. As I told my mum about what I'd seen, Steve, and he was still here, she got scared and decided to start cleansing the house again. She told me she was going to shut every mirror since they're meant to be portals from the other side, she said. 
Now, things continue as usual. He just does what he always did, normal Steve things. Then, the fucker decides to really mess with my parents. I'm sitting inside cooking with mum while dad is outside. He sees me, asks him if he wants a glass of water and he says, I walk away but never came back. He comes in angrily and asks why I didn't give him the water. I stared and said I haven't left my seat. He got angry and shouted at me until mum yelled that I wasn't lying. He went pale and said he had seen an exact copy of me go outside and ask him if he wanted water. Mum had the same experience when she saw me standing in her room and asked her something, yet I was in the living room and I hadn't moved from my location. Another, my dad saw me standing by the large fence staring at it. He didn't interact though. He said I looked off, so he kept his distance and ignored me, and that I was gone. Basically, Steve being a little shit. We went back to Chile to visit my parents' family. I was always alone laying in bed, since I was despised by my parents' families. The thing was, my cousin saw me standing there on multiple occasions, staring at them hatefully. But whenever they tried to approach, I'd walk away, behind something, and disappear. They yelled at me, thinking I was playing pranks on them, even though I wasn't. They blamed me for the strange occurrences, since the only time they happened was when I was around. When at one of my aunt's houses, there was a small house shed built on her mother's property, like a three minute walk away. I was with my cousin watching TV, when all of a sudden there was a loud obsessive scratching and growling on the floorboard that became louder, more desperate and angry. My cousin got scared and grabbed my wrist tightly, yanking me off the bed. He shouted for his mom who came running and stared at the exact same spot as I. She grabbed her rifle and lights and ran outside with us and tot, but there was nothing under the house. She turned and glared at me, yelled I bought nothing but trouble and weird shit only happens when I'm around. I got sad and walked back to the other house. I could hear footsteps behind me. When I stopped, they took a second longer to stop. I continued and thanked Steve for staying with me. Mum's mother spotted me when I was alone and glared at me. Said I was cursed, I was evil. Something evil followed me. Something with malicious intent. I'll be honest with you. I'd wanted to talk gibberish to make her think I was possessed or some shit. You know, scare the living fuck out of the people who were making my life a living hell. I still didn't really believe in paranormal, yet I did, partly due to Steve. I sat outside later that night, crying, wanting to go home to Australia. I felt Steve sit beside me, and I smiled and thanked him for keeping me company. Seconds before my mom opened the door, he vanished. We came to Australia. Finally, I was home. A few months passed, and my dad's mother passed away. On the day of her funeral, I was inside the room with my parents, watching a live feed of the funeral. When I turned around to look at the foggy glass door of the sturdy room, right there against the glass was Steve's face, eyes boring into me. He pulled away once he realised I noticed him. I went out of the room eventually, but he wasn't there anymore. There was a thunderstorm, a really bad one a couple of months later, I believe. I was laying in bed, still awake, messing on my device when I heard the door slide open. I recognized the noise as the fly door and swore. The wind probably opened it, so that meant I needed to go lock it before I could potentially break from slamming open and shut. But then, the slider window door opened up. I heard the clicks and then it was closed. I froze in horror then heard a masculine voice I recognised as Steve's. Hello? Hello? I didn't respond at first. Eventually I called back, Steve? But there was no reply, so I hid under the blankets. That's when I heard footsteps coming towards my room. They stopped right outside it. Then there was one, two, and I thought it was mum. Three. I sighed and took my blankets off only to come face to face with a huge fucking black figure stang standing over the edge of my bed. Two green bleeding eyes staring at me and then he ran. He ran right out of my room and I just sat there in shock. Time passed on as usual. Then this bullshit happens. So I've been pissed off and shouted at Steve to give me proof he was real. To show me 
at least let me record one thing that would prove he was real. A few days later, 1am or some shit in the morning, the curtains in the living room started banging against the glass. And I get scared as fuck since there's a huge windstorm outside. Of course, first thing I assume is that a window is open, yet my common sense tells me the curtains would have been banging from earlier. And also the fact that we had turned on the heater and we had closed all windows. The grills for the air conditioner were all shut, so no air could have come through those either. I was scared. My cat was in my lap, so I knew it wasn't him. I heard my parents in their room, so it wasn't them. The sound continued and it stopped out of nowhere. Loud footsteps that towards my room and stopped at my doorway. I grabbed my phone and turned on the flashlight. I saw nothing, but could feel eyes on me. A bit passed and he walked away. I heard his footsteps all the way back to the curtains and they started a banging again. Like fucking hell that. That kind of shit is scary and incredible. I couldn't believe it. Steve just came in. Came to see if I was recording and went back to make sure I got a fucking recording. Like damn man. I showed the recording to my mom, which was a really shitty audio recording. And when she heard the curtains banging, she went pale. So did my dad. She cleansed the house again and asked me to stop interacting with Steve. Small random things that have happened are him patting me on the head when I was walking down the hallway after watching a horror movie. I was scared and he soothed my worries. Another, he adjusted my glasses since they were shonky. It was random but sweet. He threw a piece of paper across the table when I had wanted it and he neatly put all my sparkles into an envelope folded paper, which I don't fucking know how he did that without me seeing. Once I hadn't wanted to shower, then the tap opened and closed. The bathroom door opened and closed. I glared at him and told him to fuck off, since he didn't have anything to clean, so he can show off. It's funny, because I'm not even scared anymore. It's more entertaining, and I just want to figure out what's going on. Since I never believed in the paranormal, until this asshole decided to drive me mental. Trigger warning for anyone easily disturbed by mentions of suicidal tendencies. From some stuff that's happened recently, I think that it's confirmed. Steve is responsive, yet hasn't spoken. He knocked stuff off my shelf while I was venting. I felt his presence right before I slept, and weirdly enough, it was the first time in months I had a few hours sleep with no nightmares. He's a soothing presence, and I only feel lonely or scared, and he tends to make noises in an attempt to tell me I'm not alone, I'm guessing. On the other hand, I started to notice the difference with the other presence. It's much, much colder. It feels eerie. My room can suddenly feel like a fridge out of the blue. When I'm near a mirror, I feel it close by. Something always seems off about my reflection. I guess one of them is attached to me due to my depression, anxiety, suicidal tendencies, and all negative things. Or Steve just wants to help for unknown reasons. I wasn't going to mention this originally, but I decided to try my luck and put a knife against my stomach to see if it would pierce. No, I wasn't intending on hurting myself. Well, I was, but that aside, I usually have my mind filled with whispers of encouragement to hurt myself, but at that moment, I felt as if someone else was holding my hand that had the knife and put it down. My mind hasn't been filled with whispers for once, just a voice without sound and saying they needed me just as my mum walked into my room. I sometimes wonder if Steve is a guardian or someone who killed themselves and is trying to save me some, for some reason. I've been wanting to ask them. For context, I moved out from my parents' home about a year ago and will sometimes come back for a day or two, but this week, I decided to spend a week at their home. I remember as a kid always being frightened by something I couldn't explain in the house, and my brother had oftentimes seen full-body apparitions, voices and noises, all throughout the house, ever since he grew up. It pretty much died down, especially after we had our house blessed by our parish priest. I personally 
I've not experienced anything in the house since my early teens. Today, however, when I was taking a shower in one of the bathrooms, the door somehow opened. At first I chalked it up to my two dogs, who both can be clingy, and follow me around the house. When the door opened, I was half naked, and peered around the empty house and saw my dogs were not there. I have a husky puppy that I keep in my old bedroom while I'm away, so he doesn't make a mess around the entire house. I called for both of them and started hearing frantic barking from my bedroom. So I ran over and they calmed down when I opened the bedroom door. I didn't think anything of it, but I went back to the bathroom and closed the door. I started undressing again when the bathroom door opened. At this point I thought something was wrong, so I closed the door again and put my body against it. And to my complete horror, I felt something pushing back at the door. I felt it push about two or three times and then it stopped. My brother was outside doing yard work, so I called him from the bathroom to run into the house and see if there was anything outside of the bathroom. When I heard him come back in and in front of the bathroom, I exited, and we took a brief look around the house and found no one or anything. I had been used to seeing or hearing things, but I've never had an encounter with something paranormal that could be physical. A little backstory. I'm from Northern California. All my life, I wanted to be a cop. After the army, I got hired as a sheriff's deputy in the Sacramento area in late 2011. Worked patrol and was also on the CSI team as collateral assignment. So I would work a normal 12 hour patrol shift answering calls and doing standard cop stuff and then go to CSI calls for serious stuff. By early 2017, I was badly burned out and found a new purpose in life and quit. This story occurred at the end of 2016. I'm not religious at all, but I am spiritual. The house I grew up in as a kid was haunted by something serious and I've experienced my fair share of serious paranormal events as a kid, but nothing since about the age of 15. I was about 33 when this occurred. In late 2016, I was working a day shift patrol in a smaller town in our county. I got sent to a Safeway grocery store to report a domestic violence, which was occurring in the store. Being a deputy, I'm alone and have no partner, but I have backup that's coming, but it's like 20 minutes away. It's reported that a younger Hispanic male is slapping around a younger Hispanic female. It's over now and they're checking out and not fighting anymore. I show up and enter the store and immediately recognize these people. They're Norteno gang members. You see them now and again in the area, but it's semi-rural and these people mostly lurk in Sacramento and don't really come to the area much. I won't go into the whole thing, but I could just tell by how they were dressed and talking and appeared. Dude had some teardrop tattoo on his face and some crap tattoo on his neck. I knew what I was dealing with. They're compliant and say nothing happened and agree to come outside to talk. I pat them down, separate them and handcuff them. Sit them down a good distance apart from each other and start interviewing one half of the party to figure out what occurred and if anybody needs to go to jail. They're both sitting on the curb out the front of the store, with their legs kicked out facing the parking lot. My back is to the parking lot, and I'm facing the store. It's about one o'clock in the middle of a weekday in a strip mall. There are dozens of people shopping and going about the business. As I'm talking to one of them, getting their half of the story and taking notes, it's clear as day I hear the most beautiful female voice I've heard in my life. It sounded smooth and almost like really, really good computer AI. Like that customer service phone supports AI that you can't tell is human or not, but it's just a little too perfect to be human. The voice spoke inside my head. This was not my gut feeling, in a monologue, sixth sense, training, whatever you want to call it. It was an outside voice that was not mine or from my thoughts and it was beamed inside my head. All it said was, turn around. At the same time, it took to say turn around. Simultaneously, I saw my entire life flash in front of my eyes. And then saw a Hispanic man in his 30s wearing blue jeans, Adidas shoes, and a red plaid long sleeve lumberjack slash gang member shirt walk up behind me and shoot me in the back of the head in the parking lot. It's like a 33 year long movie of my entire life just played out 
in half a second in my head. So when a disembodied voice tells you something, you do it. So I turned around and the exact person I saw in my vision of me dying, wearing the exact same clothes, with the exact same scars in the backdrop behind him as were in the vision, is walking up behind me and is about 15 feet from me. Exact person, like the guy from my vision, is now standing behind me. I confront him without pulling out my gun and immediately can tell this dude is legit and is up to no good and is trying to purposely sleep up behind me. I'm professional but firm, trying to address the situation and process what just occurred at the same time. I don't have time to deal with this guy and the two detained persons. The short of it is the two detained people are his friends and he wanted to come see what was happening as he was concerned for their well-being. He gets told to basically fuck off or he's going to go to jail and he agrees that's a good idea and walks away back into the parking lot and disappears from view amongst the cars. He walks away easily 100 meters and appears to be gone. I go back to interviewing one half of this domestic and about a minute later, the same thing occurs at the first time. Voice, vision, gang members, etc. Exactly the same thing. I turn around again and pull out my gun. I regret to this day not pointing it at him and pronoing him out of the ground. I would love to know if he actually had a gun, but I suspect he did based on how he was walking, holding up his pants at the belt buckle and moving behind me. I ask for my cover officer to expedite with lights and sirens, and the second this guy hears the sirens, he quickly walks into the store and disappears. Don't ask me why I didn't do what I knew was right, and as I was trained to do, point a gun at him and detain him. I just didn't. All I could think of is I just want this asshole away from my presence. I don't want to search for him, get near him, talk to him or deal with anything about him. All I want at this moment is for him to not exist and to be gone. He had a horrible energy to him, like an almost evil energy to him. I've only ever felt that type of energy coming from another person a few times in my life. People that have experienced this might know what I mean. That's it. Partner shows up, we deal with the couple, male half goes to jail for beating on his girl and she goes about her business. I go into the store with my partner to look for the gun guy and we never find him. He must have gone out the other entrance. Didn't mention it to anyone for years and definitely not any other cops as they would have taken me off the streets. Can't prove it occurred other than my word. One of the single craziest things that's ever happened to me. My family and I recently moved to a new house. Immediately, the house just doesn't feel right. Maybe it's because this is my first time moving, but still, it was just wrong. Two weeks and everything was fine, except I kept having these dreams of a child and dark figures. That's when it started. I woke up from the nightmare and I heard this tapping on my window. It sounded like a thumb just tapping the window, and I had this sense of pure dread. The tapping was also in rhythm. It went three taps, then two taps, then again two taps, and then one. And it continued like that until sunrise. I've never felt whatever it was that night, and that was the first and last time that happened. But this next one was the one that got me to write this. So I'm cleaning the house all day. I watch a good bit of TV shows, and suddenly out of nowhere it hits me. This dread. And I don't know why, but I'm on edge. I go to my room, and I check if anybody's there, because I was hearing sounds. Nothing. Before I leave, I turn the lights off in my room. And there, this being, or humanoid, but darker than dark. It was endless dark, and I was standing in a pitch black room, yet I saw it clearly. I immediately close the door and leave the house for the drink. So my friends and I were all hanging out. There were five of us at first, and later on, only four. And due to a power outage, we resorted to playing board games and such with candles lit and flashlights out. My sister suggested we try to summon ghosts and shit like that as a joke, or just to have some fun and occupy the time. We all decided to go along with it for the time being, and started by joining hands and inviting spirits to join us, or whatever we had read online on how to summon things. 
We did this multiple times in two separate rooms, and it had started with us hearing noises that could have very well been cracks or knocks from the house being old. But I started being convinced that it wasn't a coincidence we would hear noise whenever asking for sounds and only then. We weren't getting much, so we all just started hanging out and talking in my family room like normal. After a while of just hanging out and talking, everyone in the room froze as my bathroom door at the end of the hallway slammed shut. Everyone was quiet and I started getting excited as we actually had proof of something. So now everyone in the room was on board that something was with us and it was pretty undeniable by this point. Our fifth friend ended up leaving after this, so it was only the four of us left. We came to the conclusion a majority of activity was coming from around the hallway. So we all decided to move into the hallway and try to communicate with whatever was there. We sat down and asked for signs. Our friend said he heard noises from the kitchen, but the rest of us didn't hear anything. So I asked for more signs. Then clear as day, all of us heard a noise like a sigh and everyone freaked out as they heard it. My sister actually managed to get an audio recording of the noise. Everyone had to calm down. And as we calmed down, I decided to leave the house. As I'm writing this, we haven't been back. We had recently moved into a big house in a small village near the city. The house had two floors and the rooms were downstairs and the living area upstairs. At the living room, we had this 10 meter long balcony door that you could see all the way to the city as we were the first house of the village. So one night around 7 p.m., I was sitting with my mum watching TV on the couch. My father was taking my two sisters to gymnastics practice. I like to watch the cars leaving towards the city and disappearing into the distance. So that's what I did with my father's car. After a while, I turned again towards the TV. A few minutes passed by and I clearly heard my little sister giggling loudly from downstairs. I was horrified as I just saw my sisters getting in the car and leaving with my father. However, the TV was loud and I reassured myself that it was probably a sound from the TV. Then I saw my mum standing up and reaching for the TV remote and she asked me if I heard my sister giggling. I told her that I did and together we went toward the stairs. Then my mum called my sister twice with no reply. We stood there for 10 seconds and everything was quiet. All of a sudden, we both hear my father screaming, hey! My mum ran in the kitchen and called my father and asked him where they were. He replied that they just arrived in the city. Then my mum grabbed a golf club and together we went downstairs as we thought it was probably a robber taunting us. We searched every inch of the house inside wardrobes and under beds. No one was there. This happened in the middle of the winter and all the windows were closed. So this wasn't someone from outside. I work as a karate instructor. The school I teach at is set up with the main entrance in the front, leading directly onto the main floor. And then behind the main floor, a bathroom to the left and a private instruction room to the right. The private instruction room has a large viewing window facing the main floor and a single steel door as its entrance. I'd say it's about a 10 by five space. It's important to note that there are no air vents or exterior doors or windows in that room only some crash pads and wrestling mats on the floor inside it. One day, while sweeping the main floor before class, my boss came in to drop off some equipment we had ordered. He decided to leave the equipment in the private instruction room so that it wouldn't be in the way. After he had dropped off the equipment, he left the door to the private instruction room standing completely open, resting on the doorstop. I knew this to be a fact because I could see it through the viewing window built into the room. My boss crossed the main floor and exited through the front door, closing and locking it behind him. After my boss left, I turned to sweeping the main floor. No more than a minute later, I heard the door to the private instruction room slam shut. Now I don't mean that it swung closed quietly, or that the AC turned on and caused a change in the air pressure that made it swing almost shut, or that the door was hung crooked so it swung closed by gravity. This perfectly stationary all steel door slammed shut, 
as if someone or something was pissed as hell and found the first thing it could slam. My eyes snapped towards the room and I walked towards it to see if someone was in there. I found no one. I reopened the door and left it to see if it would close again. It never budged. I tried opening and closing the front door. Nothing. I tried turning on the AC and again, nothing. I have two cats, a fat grey one, B, and a long orange one, L. I'm putting that out there first because I feel it's important to specify they look nothing alike, and there's no mistaking one for the other, not to mention their personalities because they're polar opposites. Anyway, this is mostly about B, and it's happened twice now. The first time, I was alone. My daughter was at school and my partner was at work, so it was just me and the kitties. I was tidying up the living room in front of the couch and I distinctly saw B crawl under the couch. There was no mistake in it. I've seen him do it a hundred times before because he loves it under the couch. I saw his hind legs and his tail disappear under there and the couch skirt lap down behind him. But then I looked up seconds later and saw him across the room asleep on the dining table. I stopped in my tracks. I convinced myself maybe I had mistaken the color somehow despite grey and bright orange being two completely different colours. I went into the kitchen to throw away the trash I had just gathered and Elle was in there eating food. I would have seen him leave the living room if that had somehow been him under the couch. He would have had to walk right past me. I chalked it up at the time to being a visual hallucination as a result of a manic episode. Even though I'm far worse mania and I've never experienced visual hallucinations before, but I tried to get over it. But that wasn't the end of it, because yesterday, about a week after the first incident, the same exact thing happened to my partner and daughter. They both saw it. They were in the bathroom getting our child ready for bed, while I was in the kitchen feeding the cats their supper. When I had walked from the bathroom into the kitchen, I chased Ellen there playing with him, and Bay was sitting in the kitchen doorway cleaning himself. I remember this because he jumped when I ran past chasing L, and it was funny. But he went straight to his bowl with L and waited to be fed. I fed with both of them, sitting right there staring, and they both started eating right away. They were both at their bowls when I left the kitchen. So both of them were in my sight the entire time. My partner and daughter say this happened. As they're brushing their teeth, they both saw B bolt across the living room and crawl under the couch. My daughter even reenacted it for me. She's four. What reason would she have to make it up? This really freaked me out. I don't trust myself, but both of them saw this. And they didn't say it to try and scare me. They didn't even realize B was in the kitchen. They thought he took off chasing a bug or something and thought it was funny. My partner even checked under the couch for me. And of course, nothing was there. But I was so freaked out. I don't know what to think. I was walking through my lounge, my boyfriend in the kitchen next door, when I heard a click directly next to my ear. Like someone sharply snapped their fingers. I checked around and couldn't find a source of the sound. Boyfriend heard the click, but faintly since he was in the other room, which at least tells me I wasn't hearing things. Second instance was in the lounge again and sat on the sofa. I was taken off my cardigan when I suddenly felt my scrunchie on one of my Dutch braids disappear. Like the weight of it suddenly went missing, if that makes sense. While I was holding the ends of the plait to make sure it didn't unravel, and I was searching the sofa and surrounding area, but couldn't find the scrunchie anywhere. Decided to go into the bedroom to get another scrunchie. And when I got about halfway across the room, I felt something lightly drop onto my head from a short distance. It then fell to my feet on the floor. I looked down and it was the scrunchie. This really kind of freaked me out, to be honest, and I wasn't sure how to react. So I just picked it up and said thank you out loud and immediately hightailed it out of the room. I'm not sure about the energy. Like, I don't know if I was so freaked and weirded out by and during the experience that that tainted the energy of the being. But I didn't feel in danger, but I also felt unnerved by its presence.
My house, where I've always lived and still do, is built on the site of an old deep pit. In 1874, the pit collapsed and killed a hundred boys and men. My house is around a hundred years old, I think. Anyway, weird things happen here, and it's not just my family who have noticed it. The sighting started when my sister was young, around nine or ten. She was woken by the feeling of being stared at. When she opened her eyes, she was greeted by the clear face of an old woman. As you can imagine, she jumped out of bed and cried at my mum's door. I've heard both accounts of this story, and she still swears by it to this day. When she was older, I want to say around late teens or early twenties, she was in the kitchen with her then boyfriend cooking food. A white apparition swiftly shot past them as if it was walking down the hallway. Both her and her boyfriend looked at each other in disbelief and asked each other, did you see that? My sister isn't my only sibling. I'm the youngest of three. I also have a brother who's slightly younger than my sister. They used to have the house full of people drinking and partying on weekends. This is where it gets interesting. On several occasions, friend would ask, who's the old woman? Or say things like, I swear I saw an old woman. One occasion in particular was a close family friend of ours who randomly mentioned one day that he'd been sitting in our living room during one of the parties and saw an old woman sitting at the end of our old corner sofa. At the time he was drunk, confused and probably a bit scared so didn't really act on it. However, mentioned it a couple of days later during a conversation. Now this is where I come into it. When I was a kid, I had one of those old type TVs that give off a fishbowl vibe. I woke up in the middle of the night randomly, but what I saw wasn't an old woman. I opened my eyes and in front of me was my fishbowl like TV and the reflection was a girl. The girl was not me. She was sitting upright just staring back at me. I was lying down in bed. We still have weird things that happen around the house. It's only me and my mum here now but things like Alexa randomly playing the radio at 3am. Things going missing, random bangs, cold drafts and light bulbs dying quickly. I often feel someone watching me when I'm in bed, but I convince myself it's paranoia and ignore it. There's sometimes a bad smell that cannot be explained around the house. When my mum first moved in almost 30 years ago, the neighbour asked her if she could smell it. We have no idea what it is. We lost my mom unexpectedly in July. We're all dealing with it in our own way, but she was the person who held us together. I don't normally live with my family, but a few months ago, I became homeless. Until about mid-August, I wasn't staying in the family home, but right now I am temporarily. I don't like being here because I don't feel close with my other family members, and one of them, my niece, has brought her boyfriend here to live. Even though in no way is this the house, he makes me feel uncomfortable and unwelcome, so I'll be leaving here as soon as I can make other arrangements. The weirdness started about three days ago. We have one of those heavy duty metal screen doors with a deadbolt lock. It's been very hot here and the house doesn't have working AC. I'm sleeping in the living room near this door. I like to keep the inner door open at night for the cool air. I've started to hear what sounds like somebody fiddling with a key in the deadbolt, which is always kept locked. We have a few cats and dogs, but when I'm hearing it, none of them have been near the door. It's only been happening at night when everyone else is asleep, or before noon when I'm alone. I've gotten up multiple times to see if someone was out there and there never was anyone. I didn't put too much thought into it, and tonight the door inside of the screen door is closed. Earlier, out of the corner of my eye, I thought I saw movement between myself and the kitchen. This would be the path someone would take when walking to or from the door where I've been hearing the noises. I ignored what I thought I saw until about an hour ago. I was looking in that direction and there were no lights on. There is some light coming through the window, but it doesn't reflect in the direction of what I saw next. A shadow moved from left to right, darker than the dark. I'm currently the only one awake. Nobody but me was in the room except for a couple of the cats. There's never been any activity in this house, even though a couple of other people have died while they lived here. But now all of a sudden, right after my mum passed away, 
I'm seeing shadows and hearing noises. It isn't scaring me or giving off a threatening vibe. In my 30 years of existence, I've seen some pretty weird stuff. Some things I think if I was smarter, I could figure out with logic, but other things I just can't explain without bringing in the paranormal. One of the weirdest experiences I've ever had was when I was 19 years old. I'm from Deming, New Mexico, born and raised. And being from New Mexico, there's no shortage of folklore and ghost stories. There's a lot of places around the town and surrounding places with some dark history. And one of those places is the old Silver City Highway. Since I was a kid, I've heard stories about crazy shit that's gone on that highway from people seeing witches, strange lights by the road and by the mountains, and even a man with wings walking along the road by a more remote spot by the highway. The highway has seen its share of car accidents and death, but all highways have their fair share of tragedy. But still, even with everything, I've heard about the highway. I'd never seen anything the times I went to Silver. So after high school, I got a job with Coca-Cola as a merchandiser. I was training with two guys. One guy did the in-town stores and the other went to Silver City and the Bayard area in New Mexico. For out of town, we had to leave a lot earlier than everybody else. Pretty much had to be on the road by three to get to Silver City Walmart first. Weekend guy was Alfredo. I was still pretty new, so we're still in that kind of awkward but cool stage of working together. It was a Saturday before the Deming Duck races. We both showed up at the plant around 2.45. We take a company car, stop at a gas station and snacks, and we're off. So we're driving on the highway about 20 minutes in and it takes about an hour to get to the Silver City Walmart from Deming. It's still early, so talk was minimal, mostly just listening to the radio. I can't remember what it was about, but we did start getting into conversation about something. While we're chatting, we both see we're coming up to what we thought was a motorcycle ahead of us. To be honest, I couldn't remember if I saw anyone in front of us when we left, but it was early morning, so cars on the highway are minimal. Again, we're just talking about whatever, just staring straight ahead. The lights are a good 30 feet from us, keeping a steady speed. All of a sudden, the light starts to slow down slowly. I just remember thinking like, why is this guy stopping in the middle of the road? Alfredo was driving, so he started to slow down and he's now getting pretty close to the light. We almost came to a full stop when we saw it. It was a red light, like the back light of a dirt bike, but that's all we could see. Everything else was just blacked out. And in a split second, the light in the road shot off into the field on the side of the highway. What made it so creepy was how subtle it was. It didn't make a noise when it shot off. The best way to describe it was like someone moved a laser pointer on a wall real fast. The light when it shot off also turned white and disappeared into a green-like speck. We didn't say anything to each other when it happened. I think we were both trying to process what we just saw. After what seemed like forever, Alfredo says, did you see that shit? I could tell in his voice he was hoping it wasn't crazy and I saw it too. Yeah, what was that? I responded. I wish I could say we spent the whole ride talking about what we just saw, but we didn't. For the most part, it was awkward and silent the ride there for the majority of the day. Whatever it was, it affected us in a weird way. I could tell Alfredo was still trying to process what he saw. He had this dumbfounded look on his face all day. I didn't really feel like talking that whole day, just wanted to know what the fuck I saw. We finished all of our routes by three and were back home by four. The next week, I was moved to a warehouse, so I never went back on route with Alfredo, but I never told anyone at the plant what I saw, and I don't think he ever did either, besides maybe friends and family. My girlfriend at the time thought maybe we're just still groggy from early morning. My mom actually believed me though, telling me she's seen weird things as well when she would drive to Silver to take night classes at the college. So after recently visiting my family in New Mexico, I wanted to share this story. What reminded me of these events were actually from a country drive I took with my brother. It was near sundown, so we decided to just take a drive out to listen to some music and enjoy some scenery. Heading back from our drive, my brother took a back road that would lead us on a main road 
back to our house. And when he got on it, I immediately got shivers and remembered this road. We were on Hermanus Road. A really sketchy dirt road that loved to bust tyres, shake your vehicle uncontrollably while driving, and was about two football fields long. But most of all, this road was fucking creepy at night. Luckily, there was just enough light left when we crossed it and headed back onto the paved road back to our house. So when I was a senior in high school, I started dating this girl who lived out in the country with her family. Once you crossed Hermanus and hit the stop sign, you'd take a right and there were a few trailers and houses that resided around the area. On the road itself, only a few houses, some were ranches. So I'd drive her home from my place at night, and at first, I never saw anything. But make no mistake, at night, the road was its own thing. The road would be dark, I mean pitch black. The road had trenches on the side, guess to keep the rain from flooding the road. But if you weren't paying attention out there in the dark, you could go over. You really had to watch yourself when crossing it just from all the elements on it already. But from the beginning of my senior year to graduation, I was taking my girl home and driving the room at night and never saw anything. Then about a month after graduation, I was taking my girl home during the day when we saw a giant gust of dirt in the mesquites on the side of Hermanus. As we got closer, we realized it was a car that had flipped into the bush. We got out and went to the scene. A guy about my age at the time was sitting near his flipped car and bleeding from his hand. We asked him if he was okay and immediately called an ambulance. He really wasn't hurt too bad besides cracking his knuckle, but he was definitely in shock. We gave him a towel and asked him what had happened. All that he would really say is that somehow we lost control of his car. When Amy Mass got there, we headed out. Not too long after that, maybe a few weeks, I had three experiences driving home from my girlfriend's house that prevented me from ever driving down that road again. This happened when I was 19, I'm 33 now, so I can't remember exactly how it all took place, but I do remember it was in a matter of two months. One night, while I was driving to my girlfriend's house, I came across a dead dog lying near the road. I remember it was a pit bull, a big one. From my headlights it looked brown, but it laid there sprawled out like someone had moved its limbs to make the figure more dramatic. Well, it sure as shit worked on me. The look of it was unnerving. I told my girl about it when I got there, and we thought maybe a neighbour's dog had gotten hit, and someone tried to move it. When I left and drove by the spot I had seen the dog, it was gone. One night, I decided to stay the night at my girl's house. It was late, maybe around one. I'm driving down the road when all of a sudden, I see someone on the side of the road frantically waving their arms, trying to get me to stop. I remember it really startled me, so as I got closer to where they were waving, I started to pull over to see what was going on. Then, I saw the figure drop its arms and kind of just look at me very strangely, and it moved back. And when it moved back, it was gone. To this day, all the best way I can describe it is like the scene in 1408 when John Cusack is waving to that shadow figure across the building next to him. On what would be my final time on this road till now was one night while coming home from the girls I had just turned onto the road when my 2000 Nissan Frontier started to shake uncontrollably. I thought, okay, maybe the dirt waves on the road are bad on this side, so stay on the other till it's over. Same thing. Shaking the shit out of my truck. I'm driving at normal speed, going over the bumps, when all of a sudden, my truck starts to want to lose control. I remember vividly, my truck was getting pushed near the side of the road. I was holding onto the steering wheel, trying to straighten it out, and hitting the brake, because for some reason, the truck had excelled. The truck finally came to a stop, as my front end hit a few mesquite bushes. I shook up after that. It was such a weird experience because it really felt like someone grabbed my truck and was trying to push it off the road and I was resisting it. I backed up and hauled some major ass out of there. I was so scared I threw caution to the wind in my escape. After that night I never went on that road again. I told my girlfriend and some of my family what happened. I also assumed no one would believe me so I never pressed too hard on it and I didn't want them to make me want to take them there. Until she came and moved with me into town, I took another way to my girlfriend's house. 
From then on, I'd come from the opposite side of where the houses were, from a paved main country road. The creepiest thing to this day is the first encounter I had on the road. It was with that kid who flipped his car. I remember him saying I don't know how I lost control of the car. And my last encounter on that road was some kind of entity trying to throw me off the damn road. So I wonder if maybe he got thrown off the road.